Okay, I believe this is your first round uh, the Deutsche Bank, right? Yes, first sir. round of interview. Yes. All right. Um, so, can you tell me uh, what technologies are you working with currently? Uh, currently, I am working as a backend developer, so mostly working on Spring Boot applications along with uh, Oracle database and asynchronous communication. We are using Apache Kafka. Okay. Uh, Apart from your backend development experience, um, are you also having, say, if you have to probably play a support role and supporting the front end and the uh, and some back end uh, as in uh, oracle and pl sql uh, how comfortable yeah. are you Yes, yes, I am compatible with. Actually, my uh, previous organization used to work on uh, uh, Angular, Angular JS, and uh, half hmm. of the time I worked on Angular 10 as well. Okay. So currently, uh, you are uh, part of a, uh, what is the team size uh, you are uh, working with? Currently, we have. Uh, Since this is uh, our first round of interview, this will mostly be technical with some hands on questions, some concept based questions. So this is the kind of the structure of the interview for the next 45 minutes to one hour right so let's start with the probably problem statement let me just ping it here uh, so that it will be readily available to you suppose you have an array of uh, employee objects and every employee object has certain fields uh, like id uh, name department id and code commit count we are tracking say how many code commits he has done right so this is the structure of my employee id uh, employee mm, class so i want to basically find the employees for each department with highest code commit count how would you go about this so you have list of employee and you want to get uh, the name of uh, whose employee committed max uh, number max of number of times in a department so okay. suppose like the list has uh, yeah, uh, department number 100 200 300 so from every department say department number 100 I want one name, department number 200, I want another name. And so obviously from every department, I want person with highest number of commit. Okay. In that case, so we need to grouping by the department and then we can get the max of that particular department. Like, mm -hmm. Can you write the code for it? Or maybe we can screen share and... Yeah, sure. okay. So you are using streams. Okay, streams, yeah. So, uh, can I use ID or notepad only? Yeah, 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 definitely. You can use any. Yeah, yeah. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, now it is visible. Yeah, yeah. So maybe you can probably walk me through your uh, yeah. solution design first, and and then you can write the code, or you can do it both parallelly, right? While yeah. you are writing the code, just keep explaining yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, uh, I will create one class employee first of all. Then I will try to write the logic. Like uh, I will use stream. I will create list of employee object and will perform operation using stream and uh, try suppose, to. Uh, uh -huh. Suppose I'm not using Java 8, for example. Oh, okay. right? Then, then what? What would be your approach? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In that case, uh, it's a similar to our database query actually. Group why we need to do first of all. Okay, has map we have to create uh, based on the department. Department as our key and value should be our list of uh, employee. Okay. This is our list. And you can write a pseudo code also. Yeah. I'm basically interested more in the logic. Uh, how yeah. would you solve it? Yeah. Right. Output so, should be string is our department and list of employee. Yeah employee as our output so this should be our output mm -hmm. map. okay so i have a list of employee first of all mm -hmm. yeah this is my list and this is my map so i will create new or a list i will add some yeah i will add some employee there but you are yeah that's fine that, okay, okay yeah yeah so in basically case, i mean we don't want to spend time on, yeah, on yeah. these regular things sure, right sure, sure. there's the core of your logic yeah, in that particular for loop. Here I will create one temp uh, map that is uh, already created. I will use mm -hmm. uh, about the loop so that I can key value. And here I will check uh, uh, whether key is exist or not. Okay. So in the map we have so what? contents key. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I got the logic. Yeah. So you want to at the end of it it will be like department number hundred key and then it will map to values basically list of employees in 
department 100 department 200 list of employees in department 200 mm -hmm. right and so on and so forth so what are you going to do with this list i mean okay you want to max department count then no i want the person with max commit count in a department so from every department every i just department. need one person mm -hmm. right okay then i need to go with the sorting as well and i will get the max result then yeah from each department you, you want uh, one person so in yeah. that case yeah so in that case uh, this loop uh, will work i think so what is the complexity of this solution uh complexity wise uh, because we are running one loop it's a order of n we can say but you are passing through the list again so like it's kind of order of 2n which is order of n only right no, I will try to write logic inside this if code uh, so that uh, because we have only one list and uh, we need to arrange at same time and uh, we need to get the max at same time so uh, mm. whatever the key we are getting according to that uh, we will check whether the value of that particular employee how much count is, is it there inside that employee. Mm. If it is mm -hmm. less than, we will add uh, a latest value. Otherwise, if it is less than that, then we will not update that particular employee. So, will the structure of the hash map change? I mean, do you still want to use string comma list of employee? Or you want to change the structure? Is, is it, I think the list of employee... No, no, no. In that case, only... Uh, employee would be there only uh, you want only one employee from each department yeah. so yeah in that case we yeah yeah then so how are you going to get just in one part mm -hmm. yeah so i will check uh, okay this is the map and i will write with logic contents key is there Uh, what are you going to compare for the value? Actually, department wise, I need to check. Okay, so uh, if I, I am checking uh, whether uh, already added key is there or not, so we need to group back like we are grouping why so similar kind of uh, methodology I am using. Uh, every time I am checking whether key is all uh, already available or not. If key mm -hmm. is not available, then I will add that key and the employee. Mm -hmm. If the key is available, then? Then I will check. If the key is available, then by the key, I will get the value. So value would be our employee. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in that particular employee, what is there? Commit code is there. So Yeah, commit count. Yeah, commit mm -hmm. count is there. Then uh, one more if I will write like uh, commit count. Commit count uh, is greater than this particular one more yeah here we have employee object so this employee has employee emp so i will check okay we are replacing with the key so we will check whatever the value we are getting from map that commit count if emp dot get commit count get commit count is greater than this commit count then i will put whatever the the key uh, whatever the key and value string i will put those those employee okay yeah employee. sounds good okay. is there any other way to do this uh, this is one of the solutions is there a faster way to do this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, faster way without Java 8. Let me think on it. Oh, we have list of and without loop, how can we complete it? There are a way, but I am not getting this time. I will try to figure out again. Okay, yeah, yeah. no problem. So in the interest of time, we will just keep moving. Uh, uh, yeah. Just limited time. So then my next question is uh, related to threading in Java. So what is uh, special about the executor service framework? Uh, why do they? Why do people use it instead? of creating threads uh, using runnable etc right. yeah. so, uh, suppose uh, we are creating thread through runnable or extending the thread class so what mm -hmm. happens it's a it's, it will create a operating system level thread so suppose if you want to perform some uh, thousand operation it will create uh, thousands of uh, thread and it mm -hmm. should be overhead on our operating system so that's why executor framework came into picture and uh, based on our requirement we can provide pool like comp like we have n number of uh, threads whatever threads we want and we can use those thread and other time other uh, tasks want to execute they can use that particular thread so suppose we have given 10 threads so it won't increase overhead on our operating system and it will execute all the thousands of tasks by using those okay. 10 threads on mm -hmm. okay so suppose you have you are creating an application designing an application so generally speaking how do you decide 
you need 10 threads or 20 threads or 30 threads right mm. why how do you decide this number of threads uh, this thing value the value we can decide by the performance actually how much performance uh, we will uh, try to run some uh, mm. suppose we want we will create a thousand threads and we will submit it to 10 and then we will uh, try to figure out the performance whatever the performance we are getting but at the design level if we have earlier developed then we can compare our current uh, design if we don't have okay. configured earlier then we need to go by the test yeah. that is fine that is one of the ways uh, suppose i tell you that the the operation that you want to parallelize using threads right that is why we use threads to parallelize okay. operation suppose the operation i want to parallelize it is a cpu intensive activity maybe some algorithm complex algorithm that is running so how many threads would you choose for that, that it says because if uh, some complex algorithm is running so it will uh, utilize our cpu more if we increase the thread then we won't get a cpu for our other services mm -hmm. in that case uh, minimum uh, whatever the minimum we can use uh, that much but uh, if our uh, task is light then the, we can use multiple threads but still the number of threads uh, how many would you choose to start with i will start with three threads why the number three uh, that should be a reason right uh, because if it is a complex code that we are executing through that uh, thread and i want to allow multiple thread but generally we are using 10 threads minimum and a pool okay all right that's not a problem so in the context of threading only uh, i will ask my next question uh, you have heard about deadlocks yeah. what is a dead deadlock yeah you have, we have heard is it, you are a computer engineer so yeah, yeah, yeah 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 Okay. So we have all read about it yes. in uh, operating system, right? But even generally in Java also, you would see there are certain operation situations where we have a deadlock. Uh, uh, can you explain to me what is that? Suppose uh, we have two resources. Resources is nothing but is object in our Java. So multiple threads acting on that particular. Suppose we have two resources and multiple threads acting on those resources, and uh, both are dependent on each other. And uh, what happens in some point of time? One one resource is blocked for some reason and uh, second resource uh, is required that resource in that mm -hmm. case some what happens resource uh, one and resource two are interdependent but we can't they can't help each other in that case mm -hmm. that's why deadlock came into the picture so in that case uh, we need to avoid we need to write the code in such a way that we can uh, the code should not can uh, raise some deadlock or any any blocking kind of code we, we should not write and uh, also we can recognize deadlock in uh, j console as well uh, if we are using multi multi threaded application then uh, we should uh, go for our j console and uh, check whether deadlock is coming or not mm -hmm. um, right can you uh, write a pseudo code to simulate a deadlock uh, some scenario can you give me okay i will try to write here Uh, maybe you can explain to me what you are trying to do. Yeah, that would be faster. Yeah, I'm the moment to, yeah, yeah. the moment I feel that you know this, I will jump on to the next question. It will be faster for both of us. Right. Yeah, so I will try to write two resources here, and I will create two synchronized blocks, and will do some sleep operation there, and uh, will try to use this resource one inside the this synchronized. I will try to use this res two inside this synchronized block. So I will create mm -hmm. two synchronized blocks, one for res, one for res two and try to call each other from their synchronized block and meanwhile I will do thread dot sleep so the deadlock would mean that they will be stuck forever no? yes but how, how is going to happen with these two I mean from I mean just from uh, maybe can you explain to me before writing the code um one thread has acquired cell the first resource yes and it went to sleep the second thread wants to acquire it but then it will be able to acquire right the first thread will come out of sleep and it will complete its operation mm -hmm. the second thread then will be able to get resource on yeah, yeah. so where is the deadlock yeah yeah i will write one infinite loop try to call uh, at some time it won't both each other block so in that case i can write one loop inside that loop i will call i will write those synchronized block some point in time because it's a deadlock is a condition which generally not occurred but uh, sometimes if we execute our application it may occur it may not occur mm -hmm. here itself if i will write then it will occur no synchronized block if i write here so this is happening inside one thread uh, in the second thread what will happen no, in that case i will use res2 here i will write res 
Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So what is happening? Can you explain? Me? So in that case, uh, so, so both to... started at the same time, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. It went inside uh, logged res, right? Mm -hmm. And it and the second one is has come. It has logged res two. Okay. Yes, res two has logged. So at the same time, no, I mean the second thread would log res two, yeah, right? I will add some thread dot sleep so that we can get some time. Is the positioning of thread dot sleep correct? Uh, Similarly, here I will write. Uh -huh. So that. So what will happen here? Try to run this application. Check. Are you? So have you created a? Have you created two threads? I mean, I don't see two threads here. Okay. So for two thread. Uh, so you will create a runnable. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. Do a start. I don't know. Right. Also. No, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, the logic is kind of correct. I mean, because okay. you would lock rest, rest, uh, and at the same time, rest two is locked. Yes. You will go inside. Uh, the first one again, then rest two is locked. You will be blocked there. Yeah. Here, and you are have also acquired rest here. But the second thread would go forward. Uh, uh, here it has al already acquired rest two, but it won't be be able to acquire rest because it is already acquired. So it's a deadlock. Okay. So moving ahead. Um, so what are the operations? Do you feel? Uh, where linked list is better than array list. Okay. Suppose uh, uh, we want to manipulate, yeah, manipulate the list, then uh, manipulate the collection, then we should use uh, list, uh, linked list, because in that case manipulation will happen fast. In the case of uh, storing the data, fetching the data, uh, then we should use list, uh, because uh, it's worked on uh, the concept of indexing. It's a dynamic. Suppose you want to insert some data, which which one should you use? In, you you want to insert anywhere or at the end of the collection if you want to anywhere add anywhere then uh, linked list uh, would be better yeah because, Are you sure? yeah, because if Why you want to any? add in the array in between so it will shuffle uh, rest of the indexes mm -hmm. but in the case of linked list what happens is it will change the reference only mm -hmm. and if you want to search for an element which is better searching an element uh, list is better uh, array list is better because in the case of linked list we need to search node by node and in the case of in indexes we need to pass that particular index mm -hmm. are you sure about this i mean i thought uh, searching would be faster in linked list searching let me think over it uh, suppose you want to search for some element and um, you will call get method and complexity of get method is order of one in the case of list link list so how is in the array list uh, how it is order of one suppose, suppose we want to get some element and mm -hmm. uh, we are passing that uh, element uh, by get method so yeah it's a order of one only because if we pass the index then it should be uh, order of one even we are passing the element whatever the suppose we have string abc inside the list and we are passing abc it will searching okay i mean that that's fine i mean uh, probably move on to the next question if we have time we'll come back to it again okay. uh, can you explain me uh, what is the use of these uh, functional interfaces? Uh, so, can you explain what is the functional interface? Functional in Java. Yeah, yeah. So it came from Java 1.8. Which function have only one abstract method, a single abstract method called as functional interface? So function. Functional interface have only single abstract method. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. So only. Can you thing. give some examples? Like I, I will give you some examples. I just pinged. Yeah, runnable is also an example of functional interface because it has only run method. So what is the advantage of having functional interfaces? Advantage. So earlier uh, we need to write anonymous class uh, to implement a functionality but in the case of functional interface uh, directly we can implement that functionality without creating the class like uh, we have lambda expression by lambda expression we can implement our functionality at in one line so concise code uh, we can write there okay no. yeah, great okay moving on to the next question uh, suppose uh, suppose you are developing an e-commerce site and uh, you are basically storing different properties in different data structures what would be the appropriate data structure to store prices of your uh, products would you store them in int long double uh, what data type should prices. you use prices should yeah. be in the double mm -hmm. because it should be in the form of pointing so what is the 
but but there is some problem with using double type as well i thought the java double are a little problematic okay uh, in terms of using spring applications spring boot uh, suppose so you must have created rest controllers right suppose uh, you do not want more than 10 people 10 10 outside uh, services to hit you at any moment at any given moment of time uh, how would you enforce that understand the problem state uh, you have host, you have hosted a spring boot application yes yes Right, and then you have a rest endpoint, say uh, get stock price. You do not want that more than 10 connections at a time okay. would hit you. Uh, okay. uh, how? So how do you ensure this? Only 10 requests at a time we can complete. After the completion, then we will get the 10 requests. That is the yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, so these would be parallel because every incoming request, Tomcat or whatever your application server, it will create a new servlet thread. Right. So, so are you looking from um, like a thread perspective or like uh, any logic uh, you can? Any apply? logic would do. I mean, if you, I, I will leave it up to you. How do you want to implement this? In that case, uh, I will use that uh, simple logic. Like uh, I will create uh, some ten tokens and uh, I will assign one token to first request and and so on. I will assign to tenth number of. If it if all the tokens are reserved, then I won't uh, allow any more thread to consume uh, my service like this uh, I will try to implement that functionality does it work I mean there is a problem that if you have to assign tokens um, by that time they, you have already given them incoming connections some uh, memory space right because say 11th one will come it will you are not blocking it you are you are then going and checking if a token is available first of all this token logic how would you implement it in Java is there right. it is easy to I mean imagine a token system but in the java world how would you implement this that if somebody has taken a token it someone else cannot take it such is there some data structure to do such a thing also do it uh, from a tomcat perspective i mean tomcat. from the application server yeah there uh, we have a configuration file available server.xml file is there uh, we can uh, configure that one property is there i believe where we can uh, define one property like how many requests at a time we want so there we can define that uh, 10 requests per time it was easy solution i think okay. earlier we have all already implemented uh, in my previous okay. organization okay uh, so similarly my next question is uh, suppose this was the incoming request suppose you have uh, underlying database and you want to make sure that the database guys have warned you that don't call my application uh, with more than 10 threads at a time how would you how would you make sure that you are not connecting to the database with more than 10 concurrent threads so does connection pool will work like i will open a 10 connection inside that connection pool size so how do you implement this connection pool actually readily available uh, connection pools are there like hikar is there there we have to provide the connection size only how many connection we want if you want to implement uh, manually then so what does it do in Hikari if you do it suppose you create a connection pool of size 10 what is the application behavior if there are more than 10 threads 10 connections open what will happen more than 10 connection want to open mm -hmm. 10 after the 11th one what will happen to the 11th one uh, it will wait for the some connection to be acquired once uh, a connection free then it will try to acquire that particular uh, connection otherwise it should wait suppose one thread is working and uh, pool is not free and no one thread is free to take that request then uh, it should wait for some time once the execution done for some threads then it will acquire the free uh, connection okay all right mm, apart from that uh, have you used REST templates uh, in Spring Boot application? Yeah, REST template. Okay. So uh, suppose you have you you have a REST endpoint in your Spring Boot application, and you want to cache the response, right? You want to implement caching for faster response. What are the different ways you can do it in Spring? For caching purpose, uh, currently in my organization, what we did, uh, we are uh, getting the data from REST endpoint, and uh, we are saving it into Cassandra database. And uh, Cassandra database has some functionality, like it will automatically release uh, that data for some time mm -hmm. that is one uh, use in our organization yeah some uh, redis server or something we can in redis server uh, some external server we can uh, 
implement for this caching purpose and uh, we can uh, use that redis server it has functionality to cache the data okay and how would you know that the cache is no longer valid i have not implemented that logic but i can figure out like uh, we have some configuration to provide that some variable should be there inside that configuration so where we can check if it is uh, not valid then uh, we need to cache again okay what are the different caching strategies uh, you, can you give me some examples like cache right through read through write back are you aware one more thing we have implemented in kafka that is stored and forward the mess okay okay so you are using kafka for uh, some of the asynchronous communication yes, yes. all right okay so i have a kafka scenario as well um, i was uh, we are recently facing this issue maybe you can probably suggest some solution see uh, suppose uh, i have uh, i have a topic okay where i am so it's a system it's a solution design basically there are multiple servers running okay listening on a topic and on the topic i publish the log level that those applications should follow these are spring boot applications okay mm -hmm. and they are currently all of them are running at log level info so i want them to i want all of them to run at log level debug or trace okay. my solution is i want to use a kafka queue i would just publish on the kafka queue that uh, yes this is uh, my new log level you should all follow this new log level so will you have to make some extra arrangements uh, how to how would you consume what are the different ways you can consume data from that topic maybe even if you consume data others should be able to read right? what what sort of communication will you configure sir, you understand the problem right yeah, suppose sir, i did not say but you want inform the all consumer that uh, the log level has changed like something yeah yeah okay in the message can't we pass that uh, some uh, extra variable so that uh, consumer may understand that uh, this is th that uh, log level mm -hmm. so if a consumer consume then it will get some message and in that message if he got that value that this this is the message for debug this is the message for error so mm -hmm. like this they can arrange their so will once suppose one of the consumers consumes that message will it disappear from the topic or uh, it will be consumed by all the all the consumers that time what is the default so behavior in kafka suppose you have a uh, you have a message on a topic I think it, and is, you have... it should consume by all the other uh, consumers as well because we have one uh, Kafka topic that is consumed by two three consumers. Uh -huh. And how would Kafka know that? Okay, mm, everyone has consumed the topic, uh, the message from the topic, and now I can discard it. That much depth I have not implemented actually. In our uh, current uh, scenario, we have developed like uh, uh, we have to. Um, pass like order we have to maintain suppose uh, we have some uh, message uh, message ordering we have to define for that what i did uh, we need to pass uh, some key that is our uh, application id we are passing in header so it will always goes to that particular partition so that consume will consume from that particular par partition suppose we have uh, three status new and uh, second is uh, prepared and third is complete so for that purpose we have implemented this logic uh, recently in our Kafka Topic. Okay, but then how would how does the Kafka queue know that uh, now I can discard this message from the topic? It won't keep it for the default behavior. It keeps the message because message is something that is immutable. And immutable is something, but discard is something. Okay, alright. I, I think you can read more about it. Yeah, somehow. yeah. Recently we have implemented for two service. Actually, I have to consume and uh, I have to publish one message adding. Yeah, I need to go through it. <laughs> This is fine. In terms of your JavaScript HTML experience, are you comfortable working on front-end applications? Have you worked maybe on some side project like that? Have you created any front-end applications? Yeah, yeah, I have created, but uh, theoretical, I want. Um, I'm not uh, that much comfortable, but I will try to answer you. Yeah. Okay. Mm, uh, so in JavaScript, uh, are you aware of uh, how how the functions are executed? Or let me reframe it. Uh, maybe do you know what is what are closure closures in JavaScript? There is something called closure. Theoretically, actually, it's uh, executed on DOM, a document object model. Fine. That is fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is fine. So you you are basically in a position to maintain the applications and from a practical perspective. 
you are not going to enter into the theory of that yes mm, so that would be all from my side uh, rakesh uh, any questions for me yeah one question like uh, what are the technology stack uh, and what are the projects uh, in uh, uh, your organization that i can yeah yeah, yeah. so no, first of all i'm pretty impressed with uh, what you have been able to answer all right uh, you probably need, yeah probably you probably need some more exposure uh, on certain topics but most of the your basics are pretty clear in terms of um, java and spring and you you were able to improvise as well the solutions um, right so that is the mindset we require and i'm going to recommend you for the next round for l2 in terms of uh, tech stack uh, we are uh, using almost the same technology what you have worked on so java spring boot angular um, javascript html css oracle um, we are using kafka as well so almost identical should be fine i mean in terms of technology fit you are fine only thing that i would uh, probably ask you to brush up is on the kind of questions i asked you which you were not able to answer at right? uh, what are the caching strategies uh, etc uh, read more about trading concepts okay definitely i will improve my knowledge uh, based on this discussion uh, this is very helpful for me yeah yeah, yeah definitely i will note so down and will. even read about performance how do you improve performance and security in spring applications this these are the topics you would be grilled on in the next round the l2 round also try to gather some common operations i mean how how um, some database questions right uh, what are index how do you refresh and index like el sql functions procedures right what are they called how do you do error handling in oracle in, in uh, exception handling in el sql because you are applying for a full stack position you are going to be asked all these questions uh, angular as well you have worked uh, so see what are memory management uh, sorry how can you increase the I mean, it is a page performance of your uh, front-end application. Such things you can read about. Uh, all right. So it was nice talking to you, Rakesh. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. See you then. Bye. Bye.